officials with the Kent County Health Department and the Kent Intermediate School District are discussing whether to close schools or keep them open in the wake of the coronavirus pandemic. Uh, this was a press conference that we believe the school district uh, called, but it's coming out of the county health or the county health department. Mm -hmm. uh, they are expected to weigh in as well. Uh, no new reported cases in Michigan, just the two confirmed cases in the metro Detroit area. That was the other, I think, detail today. But here's the press conference. Let's listen in. Local school districts, uh, K-12 traditional school districts uh, within our county. Uh, to let you know that we've had a great deal of, of uh, collaboration, communication with each other, and we have had extremely close and daily communication uh, with officials here at the Kent County Health Department uh, to, uh, to receive guidance on this uh, uh, fast developing issue. Uh, our superintendents uh, met uh, earlier today, and in the interest of the public health, uh, the well being of the students, staff, the communities that we serve, the superintendents of the public schools here within uh, Kent Intermediate School District, the Christian schools here within Kent County, as well as the Catholic schools uh, within Kent Intermediate School District, uh, have implemented a few measures that will take effect immediately. Uh, we wanted to share those with you, and we intend to share those with our stakeholders as well. Uh, and again, uh, these uh, uh, measures are intended to mitigate the spread of this uh, virus here within our uh, community and within our county. So with this in mind, uh, the following measures related to the events and the program scheduled outside of the regular school day uh, beginning immediately, uh, we are canceling all field trips uh, within the local schools. Uh, those are suspended until further notice and guidance from the health department. We're, uh, all school sponsored travel uh, is suspended until further notice. All assemblies and performances in our schools involving more than 100 particip uh, participants in the same room uh, uh, from the general public uh, will be uh, canceled and suspended or postponed until further notice. All community meetings, community uh, education programming, after school uh, programming, with the exception of child care, that will certainly continue uh, within our communities, but uh, facility rentals, gatherings scheduled uh, to take place within our school facilities will be suspended until further notice. Uh, all athletic events, uh, uh, we will uh, uh, be following the guidance uh, issued by the Michigan High School Athletic Association. I believe there was some news on that earlier today uh, where they canceled uh, uh, some state tournaments uh, that are uh, uh, now underway. Uh, but the schools are going to follow the guidance of the health department for outdoor activities uh, that are not governed by the MHSAA. And the health uh, department reports that the transmission of, of this disease and most others is far less likely in outdoor uh, type of activities. But any indoor after school activity consisting less than 100 students, again, given the guidance that we're receiving from the Michigan a Department of Health and Human Services and the Kent County Health Department will continue uh, as planned, student groups, student clubs, uh, those will uh, continue on as normal. All tours uh, from visitors outside of our uh, facility will be suspended until further notice. And as much as we love and we appreciate the volunteers who come into our schools and our classrooms, uh, uh, out of the abundance of, of caution, we are going to uh, uh, restrict that as well. So uh, we wanted to uh, share this information with you. We will be sharing it with our stakeholders as well. Uh, again, uh, just trying to follow the science as opposed to some of the emotion uh, and perception that might be around this issue. Uh, and that is why these uh, measures are being undertaken. I now turn it over uh, to Joanne Hoganson from the uh, health department uh, who will share some information as well. Joanne. Good afternoon, my name is Joanne Hoganson and I'm the Director of Community Wellness here at Kent County Health Department. And I've been assigned the important job of working with the schools, K through 12, during this um, time that we are dealing with the situation of COVID-19. I first of all want to assure the community that if we at the health department believed that closing schools would decrease the transmission of COVID-19, we, we would close schools immediately. 
we would be the first to act. But the truth is that the data that we see from the CDC and from other excellent science tells us that there is not a lot of benefit in closing schools in terms of transmission of this virus. In fact, what we know is that there are a lot of negative things that happen when school is canceled. Kids often have to go to grandparents or other older people who have um, greater vulnerability for this virus. For many parents, it's extremely stressful because they don't have childcare and, and uh, children are sometimes left unattended when schools are canceled. And so we're looking at the big picture and we're looking at science and we're looking at what the epidemiology tells us. And at this time, since there is no case of, no um, uh, validated case of COVID in Kent County right now, we do not think that closing schools is the right step for us to take. So schools will continue to be open, recognize that this is a very fluid situation. Everything will change if we find a child or a family member of a child that has um, been diagnosed with COVID-19. But right now in Kent County, that is not the case. We do not have a case of, of COVID-19 um, for sure in Kent County. Um, there's a lot of areas around us that do, but Kent County has not had any positive tests for COVID-19. We are monitoring it carefully. We have people under surveillance and things could change in the future, but right now the Kent County Health Department is not recommending the closure of schools. Uh, thank you, Joanne, and thank you, Ron. And I want to reiterate to everyone that uh, we are going to follow the science. And as uh, Ron and Joanne mentioned, this is a fluid situation. And we're going to do the very best we can as we learn more details uh, to make decisions that protect our community. And right now, uh, we believe that uh, this is the best approach considering the data that we have. So I'd like at this time to open the floor to any questions that you may have for any of us. I guess, sorry, Donovan here with TV. What is your biggest concern, or what is your biggest message rather to parents? There's a lot of information they're receiving from different avenues, different forms of media. What do you tell them to make sure that they know you're keeping their students safe? Yeah, so the most important thing that I would tell all of our parents is if your child is sick, they need to stay home. Uh, the most important thing we can do to protect our community is to keep sick people at home. And chances are their illness isn't even COVID-19. There's a lot of influenza. There's a lot of common cold circulating in our community right now. Uh, we need to keep all of that at home. Our hospitals are overwhelmed with cold influenza. Whatever we can do to keep that burden at a minimum is really important. Uh, I would also uh, remind uh, those uh, that are concerned is that our children, based on all the data we have, are a very low risk for developing severe complications as a result of COVID-19. It's really our older population and it's our population of people who have underlying health, chronic health issues that we're most concerned about. And by and large, by keeping kids in school, we're protecting uh, those more vulnerable populations. So are you recommending that kids stay away from their grandparents at this point? We're recommending that, uh, that sick people, whether they're children or anyone else, uh, keep themselves away from vulnerable people uh, and keep themselves uh, away from uh, mass gatherings in, in, in school or work or, or other social settings. You mentioned that there is concern for if schools do shut down. You mentioned um, uh, kids getting able to eat and things like that. Is there, a, is Kent ISD working on a plan to ensure that like meals are going to still be available in the event that there's a shutdown and taking care of those other concerns if there is a shutdown? Those discussions are underway, but at this time, uh, yeah, those discussions are underway, but at this time, uh, that uh, firm plan has not been established. We do know. I know there's been some discussion with uh, agencies such as uh, Kids uh, a Food Basket and, and others uh, to try to develop some of those contingency plans, but at this this point, we're not there yet. Um, it is it's certainly on the list of uh, uh, issues that we're we're trying to address should that contingency become necessary. Again, schools are the healthiest, safest, uh, most nurturing environments uh, that. Are, are, are there for, for, for children. And uh, uh, you mentioned the school meals. You know, for some of the children and families that we serve, uh, they're, they're getting their breakfast there, they're getting their lunch there, and in some cases, even their dinner uh, there. So 
I mean, these are all variables uh, that have to uh, factor in into, into some of these decisions as well. More harm uh, could, could be caused uh, by, by closing as opposed to uh, uh, keeping schools in session. So, but again, we lean heavily on the health department. This is a health-related issue. We're going to lean on their guidance when that becomes necessary. If it becomes necessary, uh, we will follow their lead. We are educators. Uh, and this is a health-related issue, and so uh, in the event that any of that becomes necessary, it will be based on the recommendations uh, from some of these officials who are up here at the podium. Have you seen parents keeping their kids home from school this week out of concern for their child becoming in contact with coronavirus at school? Uh, we are monitoring attendance uh, vigorously uh, on that issue, and at this point, uh, schools have remained in session. Uh, uh, it's certainly the phone calls have ticked up considerably uh, from uh, concerns that parents have, uh, often uh, not on factual information, but based on rumor uh, or, uh, you know, something that might be floating around in the community, uh, the speculation. But uh, uh, the attendance still remains, remains strong, and we certainly would like to keep it that way. Do you recommend anything concerning spring break for the traveling? Uh, we did have considerable discussion about that uh, amongst our uh, superintendent group. Uh, and, and again, because this is so fast moving and somewhat fluid, I believe as we get a little closer to that date a few weeks from now, we're going to lean on the health department in terms of some guidance uh, and recommendations that they may have, uh, uh, particularly as it relates to when students return from spring break. If they've been traveling abroad or domestically, uh, what protocols we need to implement uh, in, in, under that scenario and under that situation. I know going uh, uh, to these destinations and while there, uh, Joanne uh, spoke uh, uh, to our group about that this morning and had some great guidance. It, you know, oftentimes it's not the destination uh, that's the issue. It might be the, uh, the ride on the plane or it might be the airport or, or, or what have you with all these uh, folks passing through. So. Uh, but no, no, no uh, uh, firm plans yet in terms of what that protocol is or what that guidance. Uh, it'll be something that develops as we get closer to that date. Given, given that all the um, public universities uh, yesterday canceled all their classes and now community colleges around West Michigan are following suit today, how difficult of a, of a decision was this for you to come to? And, and did you get pushback from some of the superintendents or some of the public school districts that said, hey, we should go? That's a, that's a great question. Uh, I will say this, uh, colleges and universities, and, and I will allow uh, these folks to, to, to address this again on the, uh, the health side of that, uh, uh, that question, but they have an entirely different set of variables and circumstances that they're confronting compared uh, to K-12 school districts, namely uh, uh, dormitories and residential life. Um, is is one of those huge variables I'm sure that factored into their consideration that that uh, uh, that we don't have. But uh, again, uh, based on all of the guidance and recommendations that we've been receiving from the Kent County Health Department, from state officials, from federal guidance through a, a CDC, uh, schools are healthy healthy places, and and uh, closing schools could actually make matters worse as opposed to better. Uh, now, it would be a different set of circumstances should uh, there be an occurrence where uh, uh, there's a tested positive uh, uh, circumstance and case, and again, uh, we will follow their guidance uh, if that scenario were to play out. What are the schools doing in regards to sanitation, particularly buses, desks, things going on inside the classroom? Uh, they're definitely upping their game. Uh, you know, they might be leaving that piece of paper on the floor in order to do the high touch points, the high, uh, uh, you know, doorknobs, uh, bathrooms, etc., desktops, uh, in terms of sanitizing and cleaning. Their uh, crews are out there hitting that pretty heavy right now uh, on a daily basis. What about the culture for the kids? Are you instilling some kind of non-touching culture in the schools right now? Or? Uh, one of the things that has been emphasized heavily uh, by uh, the health department and which uh, I know our local schools are hitting heavily as well in terms of, of uh, regimen and routine is the hand washing. Uh, 
it, 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 that is one of the most effective ways, as we understand, uh, you know, to prevent the spread of this virus uh, is hand hygiene, and, and uh, so that that is happening uh, uh, considerably in terms of reinforcing that message uh, multiple times throughout the day when kids return, when kids leave the classroom, when kids are in the classroom. Uh, I know that, that that's occurring. How often do you guys discuss the situation with how fluid it is and how changing it is? I mean, come back Monday, we could have cases in Kent County, given how fast this is growing. The conversations with superintendents are happening daily, um, and the communication with the Kent County Health Department is, is happening daily. Um, and, the, and the superintendents are, are uh, having conversations in collaboration with each other. Uh, so it is something, obviously, uh, we are monitoring very closely. And are you in conversation with the same federal government about this? Uh, I have not had interaction other than the uh, material that I've read and the links that they have provided and the resources that they've shared with us uh, relative to both the state and, and federal guidance. Um, uh, our, our interaction has been primarily here at the, at the local level, who I know they interact regularly with their peers. Yeah, if I could just add on to that, um, we have been in contact with most of the other counties in west and southwest Michigan. Uh, the counties agree that this approach is the, the, the wisest approach, considering all the variables. Uh, we have also shared that information with the governor's office and with leadership at the State Department of Health and Human Services, and they are also supportive uh, of this, recognizing again that it is a very fluid situation and new information may change our approach, may alter our approach, uh, but for right now, what we know, we believe this is the most protective for the most people in our community and the schools right now are the healthiest, safest place for our kids. Do you expect changes? I mean, can we expect, people might say that this is a preemptive measure. Can we expect to see cases in Kent County? Yes. I have, I have no doubt we will see cases in Kent County. Uh, this, there's no reason to suspect uh, that we're not going to see cases of COVID-19 uh, everywhere uh, around the world. We're already seeing that. So we know there's a huge lag in testing resources. Uh, we fully expect that because most people are going to be completely asymptomatic or have very mild symptoms that don't require testing, that we already have it most likely uh, in our community at some very low level. How can a parent assuage their nervousness, anxiety, and everything without taxing your resources by calling the department all the time and everything like that? Like, how, where, where, as a concerned parent, how can we narrow down a site where they would go to find out everything they need to know? Yeah, so I would certainly encourage parents to go to the CDC website and also to the county website, accesskent.com. Uh, that's where we are compiling all the latest information. People can also follow us on Facebook. We are trying to provide updates on a daily basis. We are providing updates uh, many times a day, in fact, uh, on our Facebook page. Uh, I would strongly encourage them to, to follow that social media uh, presence and, uh, and stay up to date that way. Where are things at with the testing? How soon will people um, be able to do it already? Yeah, so that's been a huge challenge. And uh, the state has a, had a very limited supply of, of test kits. Uh, and to date, to my knowledge, that the state laboratory is the only place where that testing has happened. However, there are private laboratories which are, uh, which are receiving supplies of test kits. And we hope uh, in the coming days, and it may even be happening today, where we're going to be empowering uh, local providers to work directly with private labs to have those tests done. How many tests are there to say a limited supply? I'm not uh, at, uh, uh, at liberty to say, and to be honest, I don't have the exact number in front of me right now. I know as of last week there were 300 in the first supply they had. I do not know how many the state has at this point. I also know that uh, counties have been, uh, have been moving many of those uh, specimens to the state for sampling, for testing, I mean, over the past several days. Uh, so it is limited. Um, however, I would also encourage you to remember that, uh, that the testing is only for those who have the most severe symptoms and who have had some risk exposure to COVID-19. Uh, we fully expect that there are other people that, uh, that have an unknown exposure or have a very mild case that are being undiagnosed. Other questions? 
Very good. Well, I thank you all for coming this afternoon. And, uh, and again, I, I appreciate uh, the support of the community as we try to find reasoned, uh, evidence-based solutions and approaches so that we're balancing both the need to be responsive and proactive uh, to this growing threat. Okay, you've been uh, listening to a news conference sure that started at about 4 o'clock this afternoon with the Kent County Health Department and the Kent ISD. We listened to the superintendent, Ron Kniff, as well as other health officials there, talking about the decision to keep the school system open at this point. The health department citing the CDC. They say that the data shows them that there is not a lot of benefit in closing the schools. Mm -hmm. A lot of the uh, evidence presented in the press conference was anecdotal. They don't want kids uh, with no options to have to go to a vulnerable adult like a grandparent and transmit the disease that way. They really feel that the school itself is probably the safest place for the kids to be. And they felt like there may be a stress on the family to try and find, uh, you know, care for the child. They don't want the child to be alone. They feel like they can handle it at the schools. They did implement some measures, no field trips. Uh, those have all been canceled. School-sponsored travel canceled. Assemblies, performances canceled. Community meetings and gatherings. Volunteers restricted to the schools. So they've put some measures in place to really try and keep any outside uh, groups coming together there in the school, but the kids are going to be showing up for classes at this point through the Kent ISD. No cases uh, reported of coronavirus in Kent County. That was the other uh, news coming out of that press conference. Uh, testing, though, remains very light. They're only testing the most critical cases if they have tested at all here. We're continuing to follow all the angles on this. So look for a lot more on this uh, developing story and complete coverage tonight beginning at 5 on Wood TV 8. We'll